Welcome back to RN Toolkit. In this video, we'll cover more medications used in skin care and wound management. We'll review zinc oxide, iodine, chlorhexidine, hydrocortisone, clitramazole, permethrin, capsaicin, diclofenac, tretinoin, and neomycin. First, we're going to start with the fundamental ground rules for pretty much all topicals. Then, we'll dive into your toolkit for fighting skin infections. After that, we'll cover a whole range of other agents for soothing and protecting the skin. And we'll wrap it all up with what I think is the most important part, your role in patient safety and education. All right, first up, the ground rules. I want you to think of these as the universal principles that are going to guide you every single time you apply a topical medication. Getting these right is the foundation for absolutely everything else we're going to talk about. So what exactly are we talking about here? At its core, a topical agent is designed to work right where you put it, on the skin, on a mucous membrane. But here's the part of the slide you cannot forget. Systemic absorption can occur. That is the crucial point. Because while the goal is local, the body can and sometimes does absorb these drugs. And that has major, major safety implications. And that brings us to our universal cautions. So before you apply anything, you need to run through a mental checklist. Does the patient have any allergies? And not just to the medication, but to the cream or lotion it's mixed in, the vehicle. Is the skin totally intact? Because, you know, a break in the skin is like an express lane for that systemic absorption we just mentioned. And finally, are we going to cover this up with a tight dressing or apply heat? Because both of those things can dramatically ramp up absorption and the risk of side effects. And look, this all fits perfectly into the nursing process you already live and breathe every day. You're going to assess the skin and allergies. You're going to plan for the best possible outcome with the fewest side effects. You'll implement by applying it correctly, and this is key, teaching the patient. And finally, you'll evaluate the response. It's the same framework, just tailored for topicals. Okay, with those ground rules locked in, let's start building our toolkit for fighting off common skin infections. This is where you learn to pick the right tool for the right job, whether you're dealing with bacteria, fungus, or just prepping the skin. Now, here's a really common point of confusion, the difference between antiseptics and antibiotics. Think of it like this. Antiseptics, like chlorhexidine for a surgical scrub, are for cleansing and preventing infection. They clean the battlefield. Topical antibiotics, on the other hand, like muborosin, are the special forces you send in to treat an active bacterial infection that's already happening, like imbatigo. One prevents, the other treats. Big difference. Here's a quick reference guide to some of the key players you'll see. For Mupa Rosen, the big nursing pearl is using your clinical judgment. If that impetigo isn't getting better in three to five days, it's time to step back and reevaluate the plan. With an antifungal like Clotrimazole, patient teaching is super simple but vital. Always, always cleanse the area first for it to work best. And notice povidone iodine. It's a go-to antiseptic because it's way less irritating than that old school pure iodine. All right, now we're gonna broaden our scope way beyond just infections. This next group of agents is all about managing a huge range of common issues. We're talking inflammation, rashes, pests, and even pain. This is the stuff your patients are gonna be asking about all the time. Let's start with a big one, a household name, hydrocortisone. As a topical corticosteroid, its main job is to knock down inflammation and itching from all kinds of skin irritations. It's incredibly common, but, and this is a big but, it comes with a very important warning. And there it is. This is so, so critical. When you put a steroid on broken skin, you're basically opening a door for it to get into the bloodstream. And if that happens, you could cause systemic side effects. Suddenly, you're not just treating a little rash. You're introducing a powerful steroid into the patient's entire body. So always, always check the skin's integrity first. Okay, moving from inflammation to, well, infestations. When you're dealing with things like lice or scabies, permethrin is one of your primary treatments. It's designed to kill those little pests, and it's incredibly effective when you use it the right way. And this right here is why it's so widely used. For one, a single application is often all it takes, which is fantastic. But what's really interesting from a public health standpoint is that it can be used prophylactically. That means you can actually use it to prevent the spread of lice during an outbreak at a school or in a community. That makes it a vital public health tool. 
Let's round out this section with three more essentials you'll definitely see. First, you've got zinc oxide, a simple but awesome protection for things like minor burns or diaper rash. Then for pain, there's capsaicin. The key teaching point here is a big one. Do not bandage the area tightly because that can trap heat and cause some nasty burns. And finally, tretinoin for acne. With this one, managing your patient's expectations is everything. You have to tell them that their skin might actually look worse, peeling redness for the first couple of weeks before it starts to get better. And that brings us to our final and honestly most important section. See, just putting the medication on is only half your job. Your role as an educator is what makes sure the treatment is safe and effective long after that patient has left your care. So what does great patient teaching actually look like? Well, first, don't just tell them, show them the right way to apply it. Next, give them a heads up that a little temporary stinging or burning can be normal so they don't freak out. But most importantly, give them clear red flags. Tell them to call immediately if they have severe irritation or signs of an allergic reaction, and to let someone know if the condition just isn't getting any better. So, I'll leave you with this question to carry into your next clinical rotation. Your patient is holding a tube of some new topical cream. What is the single most important thing you're going to tell them before they walk out the door? Your answer to that is going to be a blend of everything we've covered today, and it will be the absolute key to that patient's safety and success.